Thank you. Uh, Mr. Speaker, um, I rise in opposition to this rule and in opposition to the amendment on Syria that will be offered later today and voted on tomorrow. If it was a bad idea before to get involved in Syria's civil war, why is it now a good idea? Is it only because ISIL has expanded its operations over a fluid border into Iraq? How long will we support the Syrian Free Army? Who are these people? How much will it cost? What happens if, if and when our weapons fall into the wrong hands? What are the countries in the region offering in terms of substantive solutions? What is the clearly defined mission? How does this end? Do we have answers to any of these questions as we prepare to vote? We're talking about war, Mr. Speaker. When you drop bombs on people, that's war. And we can talk all we want about so-called boots on the ground, but unless some of our soldiers weren't given shoes, we already have boots on the ground. We need to be honest about that. We have trained and equipped, we have trained and equipped Iraqi soldiers for over a decade. And for what? To watch them shed their uniforms and to turn their weapons over to ISIL? Is that what we're doing here again, Mr. Speaker? If the real purpose of U.S. military operations in Syria is to bring the killers of the two American journalists to justice, then perhaps good intelligence and a well-prepared special forces operation could do so, just like we hunted down Osama bin Laden. And I want to be perfectly clear on one other point. Any amendment to provide Title X authority to train and equip Syrian opposition forces must not be seen in any way as an authorization for U.S. armed forces to engage in hostilities in Iraq or Syria. It must not be seen as a substitute for specific congressional action. Authorization to carry out sustained military operations is not something that should be stuck into a conference report. There should be nothing backdoor about it. That would be an insult to our uniformed men and women, an insult to their families, an insult to this House, and an insult to the American people. On July 25th, this House voted 370 to 40, 370 to 40 in favor of my resolution to require specific congressional authorization for sustained combat operations by U.S. armed forces in Iraq. Yet since August 8th, the U.S. Navy and Air Force have flown more than 2,700 missions against the Islamic State in Iraq, including 156 airstrikes. These airstrikes have occurred almost daily over the past six weeks. Last week, the President announced that those operations will escalate and likely expand into Syria. This, mor this morning, they expanded to targets near Baghdad. If that doesn't qualify as sustained combat, Mr. Speaker, I don't know what does. So if this House is serious about what it said in July, then we should demand a vote this month on congressional authorization for U.S. military operations in Iraq and Syria. Anything less would constitute yet another, another failure on the part of this House to carry out its constitutional duties. Anything less would make a mockery of that vote that this House took in July. But if this leadership gets its way, we will leave Washington for nearly two months without such a vote. And I expect, and I think we all expect, that during that time, U.S. combat operations in Iraq and Syria will expand and escalate. I know this is a hard vote. I know it's politically difficult. But we were not elected to duck the hard votes. We weren't elected to afford to, we, were, we were not elected to avoid difficult choices. War is a big deal. We need to do our jobs. So, Mr. Speaker, I will vote no on this rule, and I will vote no on the Syria Amendment. And with that, I yield back my time. The gentleman yields back his time. The gentleman from Oklahoma. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I, reserve my, or I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized for as much time as he may consume. Uh, thank you very much. First, I want to uh, respectfully once again disagree with my friend from New York on the appropriations process. Uh, the reality is we brought bill after bill to this floor. Uh, every member has had the opportunity to, vote, to offer any amendment on seven different bills and to vote yes or no in their final disposition. The Senate hasn't brought any. And frankly, at some point, the Senate's failure to do its job begins to impact our ability to do ours. Because, Frank, it is very difficult uh, to get time on the floor and use it knowing there's not anything going on on the other side. And that's just the reality of it. So 
Uh, if my friends can talk the, uh, the Senate into beginning to move, I think they would actually find the House, which is already far ahead of them, would continue to work with them, uh, and we would actually begin to pass bills. But until the Senate will bring a bill to the floor of any kind for an appropriation, it's very difficult for us to get our work done over here. Now I want to address myself, if I may, to my friend uh, and colleague on the Rules Committee, Mr. McGovern. There is much in what he says that I agree with. Uh, frankly, I think he is correct uh, when he says that we need, at some point, a full authorization, a full debate, full discussion. He's absolutely right, and I want to commend him for the uh, action he took in his amendment uh, on, uh, on Iraq in July that we voted on. I was very happy to vote it. So I think, um, in substance, I find very little to disagree with in what my friend has to say. Uh, I do point out a couple of things, though. First, and I think my friend is aware of it, the Speaker has actually taken the position that we need a full authorization debate and discussion. And I am told that he, uh, he conveyed that to the President and actually said, uh, you know, he thought this institution, our country, which I know is what we care about supremely, and the President himself would be better off under such a discussion. That is a, a, a viewpoint that I agree with, and I think many members on both sides of the aisle and with both points of view on the issue also hold that opinion. So this is actually a, a decision that's been largely made, uh, in a sense, by the President. We have, we're trying to respond in a short period of time to what the President has asked us to do. Uh, and I think yield? that's an important point to remember in this. This is not a fight uh, on this floor between Democrats or Republicans or even for, for proponents. I think it is, at another level, a difference uh, in uh, perception about what the authority the President has, his view versus probably Congress's view on a bipartisan basis. And I think it's, a, you know, a challenge in terms of timing. It is extremely difficult for the leaders of either chamber uh, to look like they're undercutting the President uh, in a time of danger and when he's come with this request. So it's my hope uh, that, uh, again, I, we, we set six hours of debate aside for a reason. If you remember, the President's original request was simply to drop this measure in the continuing resolution, to have no vote and no discussion at all. It's actually our side and your side that insisted that it be pulled out and that the vote and discussion uh, occur. Uh, I would hope when we come back, and again, I, I share my friend's opinion, I'd be prepared to do before the election. I, I see no particular need in waiting, but I don't get to make that decision. Uh, I will yield in just a second. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, again, we're giving the Commander-in-Chief at a time of nationally what, he, what he's asking for. And uh, so with that, uh, you know, I think we're trying to be both responsible and helpful. We've actually curtailed considerably what the President asked for. We noted specifically that this does not authorize use of military force in Syria. We've required reviews. I suspect we will be revisiting this issue again. I certainly would hope so, and I look forward to working with my friend to make sure that we do. With that, I yield my friend uh, well, time th for questions. Th thank you. I want to thank the gentleman, and I appreciate um, you know, his words. Um, uh, about his view that we ought to have a vote uh, here in the Congress uh, with regard to authorizing any kind of military operations in Iraq and Syria. And I appreciated his comments last night in the Rules Committee. And I think what he's saying, I think what I'm saying, reflects the sentiment of most Democrats and Republicans. This is not a, not a partisan issue. And I think the gentleman is right in saying that the, the piece that we're voting on today has nothing to do with bombing Syria or, 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 or bombing uh, in Iraq. But yet that continues and that has escalated. And, w and my concern is that we v may very well adjourn by the end of this week um, and not come back until after the elections, and that involvement in both those countries will have deepened. Um, and, um, and, we may not, and, and we have not yet been promised that we will actually have that vote. I think, I think members of both sides would feel a little bit more relieved um, if, in fact, the Speaker would give us an ironclad promise that there will be a vote on uh, uh, on an AUMF with well, regard to Iraq and Syria. Reclaiming my time, if I may, um, I don't presume to speak for the Speaker. I know that we have this vote largely because the Speaker wanted to make sure that we had a vote. I know the request that uh, he made of the President. 
Uh, and look, I'm not condemning the president in this either. I understand all executives try to tell you they have the authority to do everything they want. Ours do when we have a Republican, Democrats do. So all I can say is at the end of the day, I think we have a robust debate. We have an opportunity to register opinion. But I want to continue to work with my friend and make sure that we have precisely the kind of debate and discussion and vote that his own uh, amendment uh, in July actually envisioned, because I think my friend is correct. I think this is an issue of constitutional propriety, and I think it's an issue ultimately of war and peace, and I think we ought to all vote on it. And I would be happy if we did it before the election, but I'll work with my friend to make sure that we do it as quickly as possible. With that, I uh, yield back, or excuse me, I reserve.